Nothing can hold a candle to what you will see at the bottom of South Flats. Salt fever is permanent. This place can break your heart and you can leave the happiest day of your life. You just don't know. Make a mistake at 300 miles an hour and a lot of times it's not a walk away. There's an element of danger. If you have a get off on that at a very high speed, you're going to do some tumbling and who knows. Sport, no event captures the imagination like Bonneville Speed Week. Once a year, car and motorcycle enthusiasts ravenous for speed congregate in one of the most alien environments on the planet as they chase land speed records on a seemingly endless expanse of hard packed salt. The Bonneville Salt Flats are located on the western edge of the Great Salt Lake Basin in Utah, in the USA. This natural anomaly is the remnant of an ancient freshwater lake left behind after the last ice age, about 15,000 years ago. Today, naturally evaporating groundwater continually regenerates a flat crust that in some areas is almost five feet thick. This massive expanse of salt covers approximately 46 square miles of land, located 100 miles west of Salt Lake City. The salt flats are inhospitable to even the simplest of life forms. Nothing grows here. Temperatures range from below freezing in the winter to triple digits in the summer. It's the last place you'd expect to see people lining up for hours to compete for land speed records. This is very harsh out here and uh, it's, there's no air to run your engine on, so it's a, it's a tough place to go fast. No prize money. No glory, you barely get in a magazine or ever heard of. Despite the harsh conditions, the Bonneville Salt Flats are a near perfect natural drag strip. The miles of flat, hard packed racing surface and long runoffs have drawn land speed racing enthusiasts for more than a century. The first unofficial land speed record was set here back in 1914. The Southern California Timing Association has been organizing Land Speed Racing's premier annual event since 1949. Back then, Bonneville Speed Week became an officially sanctioned venue for Land Speed Racers, daring enough to attempt to set world records in one of 40 categories. The Bonneville Salt Flats are safeguarded by the United States Department of the Interior's Bureau of Land Management. They decide who can race here and when. There are only a handful of land speed races held annually out on the Salt Flats. Bonneville Speed Week is the oldest, largest, and the most attended event of them all. It only happens once a year. This is the big seven day event. This is the, the big daddy of them all. And if you're a hot rod or motor enthusiast, this is Nirvana. This is really where the best amateur racers collect every year to show off their stuff. You read about this place, you see movies about the place, and you don't, until you get here, realise what the, uh, the scale of this is. This is just mind-boggling. Um, the cars, the ideas, where they get them from, and they actually got the nerve to drive the things at the speeds they do, and uh, we're just, we're amazed. They pretty much have to be on top of the game to run 300, you know, everything, it can't be just okay, everything needs to be perfect. It's just got to be a no mistakes, you know, you don't get a second chance. You make a mistake at 300 miles an hour and a lot of times it's not a walk away. Today, there are literally hundreds of vehicle categories and just as many land speed records to chase and set. In many cases, the vehicles on parade at Bonneville are as unique and one of a kind as the salt flats themselves. 
the cars you see here, uh, you'll, you'll never see anywhere else on Earth. When I came in this morning, I was following a 32 Deuce Coupe, and behind me was a 1940s hot rod, and both of them had salt all over them. And you've got cars that are streamliners that do 300 miles an hour, and you've got guys that are setting records at 30 and 40. For example, this little thing over here is a rubber band car. It runs on elastic bands, big elastic bands, but it's elastic bands, two engines, but a five-speed transmission in it, and he's gonna try and set the elastic band record for the whole world. Here, where on earth can you find? <laughs> where else? Uh, I hope to go 210. Uh, break my own record, which is 205. I said last year. Uh, speed's in my blood. There is no purse. Everything that it takes to compete and, and return is out of your heart, now your, your own pocket. And it, it's passion. I've been coming here long enough that I've seen kids dating married, have kids, and those kids have kids. It's an emotion pit. Sure, people put their life savings in here, but then people put their life savings into sailing, golf. Uh, some people save up all year and come here on five or $10,000. Some people have got millions. Um, yeah, you can put as much money into it as you want, or you can substitute innovation for money. If you're brilliant, you, you can do that. Uh, if you're not, you can, it's a money pit. And occasionally, when the combination of both money and innovation hits the jackpot, the results can be mind-blowing. Case in point, the Turbinator, an Apache helicopter motor-powered streamliner capable of streaking over 458 miles per hour, the fastest wheel-driven vehicle on the planet. For land speed enthusiasts, the road to Bonneville Speed Week starts well before the rubber hits the salt. Building and maintaining a vehicle that can withstand the salt flat's harsh conditions is a daunting task. No one knows this better than Bob Williams, owner and builder of the Aero Streamliner motorcycle. Despite its futuristic torpedo shape, beneath this aluminum skin lies a motorcycle with two wheels. The heart of this beast is a 500cc, four-cylinder, turbocharged Honda motorcycle engine. It's been carefully wrapped in a custom-built frame welded of chromoly steel. And, by the way, the Streamliner also houses a driver who must ride lying on his back while looking through a three-inch periscope. This year, Williams is once again returning to Bonneville in a third attempt to break the 500cc blown fuel or turbocharged motorcycle land speed record of 211 miles per hour. That record was set back in 1956 by the German motorcycle company NSU. Bob and his team have come tantalizingly close to breaking this record in the past, but close in this sport just isn't good enough. The bike is eight years old two years in building and six years in campaigning. It started out with a fuel tank from an F4 Phantom Fighter. 24 inches in diameter, 13 feet long, with a few dents in it for $500. That was the tip of a very big iceberg. I built the hoops, matched the inside of the diameter of the shell, so the outside of the hoops fit inside 24 inch shell. The frame become extensions of those hoops. The, the uh, swing arms were parts off motorcycles that I had to modify and strengthen so they could take the forces of the heavier weight and a more powerful motor. It's been such an evolution all the time, getting the point where it works. What you think works, you take it down there and it doesn't. And the salt and the other things you have to deal with, it's like trying to build something for the moon when you're on Earth, because the circumstances are so different. Bob Williams and his crew have discovered that preparing the Streamliner motorcycle for Bonneville Speed Week is easier than finding a qualified rider to pilot the machine. 
finding candidates for the job of hurtling at speeds of 200 plus miles an hour on a runway of salt while lying on your back just inches above the unforgiving surface has proven to be difficult. This year, longtime motorcycle show promoter and experienced drag racer, Barr Hodgson has agreed to take on the challenge. After ogling the Aero Streamliner at one of his own shows, the 70-year-old just couldn't resist stepping up to the plate after hearing that Team Aero Racing was searching for a new rider. Well, I used to drag race back in the old days and run big Harley Strokers and when I turned 60, I decided to take up road racing and did that for about 10 years and now I've hit 70 and Bonneville's one of the last things I haven't done, so this, now's the time to do it. There's no blueprint on how to do this. There's no guidelines on how to do it. I have a wonderful group of friends that bid into my dream. If it wasn't for that, we couldn't do it. I couldn't do it by myself and I couldn't do it without the help of all these people who all volunteered. It's about the human spirit as much as it is about racing. To the record, boys. Uh, here, 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 here. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. This year's Bonneville Speed Week kicked off two days ago. With it have come the long lines and prolonged wait times that are inevitable at the start of the week. But Bob Williams is a veteran at this game. This year he arrived a few days into the event to ease the stress on the team's new rider, 70-year-old Bonneville rookie, Bar Hodgson. Bonneville Speedway, you go, oh, here's a racetrack. You pull and expect to see grandstands and buildings and everything. Nice black pavement all laid out and green grass are down the sides of it, but there's nothing. Just one big expanse of white salt. This is, this is a bizarre experience. Guys are driving motorhomes down there. Everybody's strutting their stuff and they got all their great stuff here. Customs and rods and everything. Only in America. This is a huge area, as you well know, and a person can get lost out here. And we try to verify, make sure that everybody knows where they're going at any given time. You don't want somebody wandering out on the racetrack when there's a vehicle coming the other direction. And that's why you see an abundance of cones out here. Before they can chase a land speed record, all registered competitors must have their vehicles thoroughly checked by Bonneville Speed Week's meticulous staff of technical inspectors. Each vehicle must meet the SCTA strict safety requirements. A team's failure to meet these tough standards will result in being disqualified from racing. What happens if the front of the car breaks off? My legs are up there. I'm uh, yeah. paraplegic then. This section of the car won't break up. Safety is key most. Records are what we're here for. Safety is, we want these guys coming back. While this looks like a very simple form of motorsports where you just get in the car and drive it in a straight line, it's not. And uh, things happen real fast at 200 plus miles an hour. So we want to make sure all the guys and gals that drive up here are uh, thoroughly protected. My concern is, I mean, there's. I'm not really feeling anything underneath the seat where it's secured. Because, okay, let's say he takes an impact, the seat comes down, the belts come off his shoulders because he's com compressed, uh -huh. and now he's not restrained within the vehicle anymore. So. The rules for safety are very, very strict. These, these are the strictest rules that I'm aware of in any form of racing because they don't want anybody to get hurt. The whole idea is to have fun, go fast, and not get hurt. After passing technical inspection, racers queue up behind the starting lines and wait to make their timed run down one of the club's three temporary drag strips. With over 500 entries this year, many find themselves baking for hours in the sweltering heat. SCTA licensed riders returning to Bonneville can attempt to set a record on their first run. But Barr Hodgson is a Bonneville rookie. And before he can even attempt to make a record run of over 200 miles per hour, he must first prove that he is capable of going fast out on the salt by obtaining a series of licenses. 
Bonneville is not about just going there and racing. You must obey all the rules and they're all safety oriented rules. So you've got to prove you can go fast. You, you have to go a step at a time. You have to prove you can go 125 miles an hour, then 150 miles an hour, then 175 miles an hour, and then 200 miles an hour, and get licenses for each of those before you get to go over 200 miles an hour. We weren't going to go for our license right off the bat in the streamliner because there was a bunch of work had to be done to it yet. And I could save a lot of time by using a standard super bike to get my lower licenses. We'll move to the streamliner when we go for our higher licenses. We're trying to adapt this GPS to it so that I can get a mileage, an accurate mileage read because this race bike only has a tachometer on it. So I've got to guesstimate my speed and I can't break out. I've got to run I've got to run 125 to 149 without breaking out. If I hit 150, I've got to go back to the back of the line and do it all over again. So we don't want to do that. I've got some concerns, you know, I haven't raced on salt before. I feel apprehensive coming into it and I try to think of everything. If I can clear my mind up to say you've, you've covered all your angles bar, I have no problem being resigned to something and uh, going for it. This is the borrowed leather. These we borrowed from Doug, one of the, uh, actually one of the tech inspectors, when mine wouldn't pass. Took it right in there, the view's nicer up there. Yes, sir. My age really hasn't been a factor. It never bothered me all my life when I was younger, it doesn't bother me now. So do I consider 70 years old as a barrier here to me in that? Absolutely not. I mean, everybody here is gray beards everywhere I look. There's an element of danger, but frankly, um, being on the uh, open bike, that was concerning me more than anything because uh, if you have a get off on that at a very high speed, you're going to do some tumbling and who knows. Down yet today? First time. Not? First time today. Okay. How fast are you gonna go? 135. Okay. And any problems whatsoever, which way are you gonna turn out? I'm gonna turn that way. Okay, nice clean run, you're gonna turn out to your right. Okay, once you pull your parachute when you go through the traps. You're paying attention, that's all good. Have you ever driven on salt before? No. You're gonna enjoy this. 8780 with the rookie attached. Hodgson has raced a motorcycle before, but never at these high speeds, and certainly never under these harsh conditions. The temperature is high, nearly 100 degrees, but the pressure to perform is even higher. A crash on his first run at close to 150 miles per hour could be fatal. The, um... I took a small peek at the GPS and it was uh, was reading 83 miles an hour. <laughs> and I went, hmm, <laughs> it's just a big guessing game. Says 113 miles an hour. I did. That means that we were. You have to do 125. That we need to be in fifth gear or sixth gear. It means we're so far off, it isn't funny. No good. Got to get back in the lineup. Go do it again. Bar Hodgson isn't the only one going for a land speed attempt at this year's Bonneville Speed Week. 
Out here on the salt flats of Utah, it appears every land speed racer dreams of setting a new world's record. I laid in bed for an hour this morning going through the gears with my eyes closed. The record's 232, but I'm pretty confident we can do it. Depending on the class of vehicle, land speed racers use a seven mile long course or one of two five mile short courses where top speeds are recorded by the SCTA officials down to one one hundredth of a mile per hour. This dizzying amount of data is recorded and tracked in the club's master control tower, located between two courses at the three mile marker. Here, a team of dedicated volunteers scoured countless timing readouts throughout the entire week. One nine four six will be next up on the long course. This is the master control here. Uh, we do all the course control, the safety dispatches, all that, and I announce all the speeds and basically, you know, what's going on throughout the day with everybody. We got. Uh, Three computers that we're using up here on the uh, in the tower itself, plus you know the auxiliary equipment downstairs. Everybody has a monitor, so we're not looking over people's shoulders like we used to in the old days. We used to set up on a scaffold with a computer readout thing about that big, it had these big, huge dials on it, and they were spinning like you know all that, and wasn't very sophisticated. Now we got you know over 500 entries and three courses, so, you know, it, it, it's a big system. And in the last mile, uh, Bob, you went 244.535. Everybody said, oh, yeah, I can bring my drag race car up here and go 350 miles an hour, but most of them don't understand. And uh, to make a car run for five miles without, you know, blowing things all over the track is very difficult. A quarter mile car, you can do it. They will not live here a quarter of a mile. We have a spin on four, long course. For Bar Hodgson, a high speed get off is not an option. Now ready for his second attempt at his first of four required licenses, he still has a long, hot, salty road ahead of him before he can take a shot at the record. There's such a great chance of the conditions not being right, the salt not being hard, too much wind, rain, and you have that window of opportunity like a space shuttle, and if it goes by, you go home with your hat in your hand. When you get down to the end and you turn off that throttle, you have a sense of elation because you go, you know you've gone through the timing traps. It's all history now. You just got to get the numbers now. So you turn off and you come to a stop. You've gone so fast down there that you're all by yourself out on the salt and you just stop and you just have time to think about things before your crew even catches up with you. That's a great time. A time to really be personal about the whole thing with yourself. Well, that was a good one. The uh, car just verified that it was a 135, right on the money, exactly what we needed. Oh, my sunburn is hurting. Big load off my mind, really. No guessing, no nothing. I could see exactly what the speed was. I saw 135, held it right there. Mm -hmm. Guy verifies 135. Yesterday, they told me eight miles without a helmet on. And like my sunburns covered with salt, you're rubbing salt in my wounds. <laughs> all right, so back to the line. We'll get on the end of the line. We're all set for the next run. Okay. Instead of obtaining his D license, Hodgson and the Team Arrow Racing crew collect some surprising and discouraging news. According to the rule book, you need to qualify with licenses a 125 miles an hour, a 150 miles an hour, a 175 miles an hour, and 200. But this time they said they had to do two runs at each category. Well, that slows the process down a little bit. But luckily, the pits are thinning out 
and uh, probably 30% or 40% of the people have gone home for whatever reason, uh, time or they blew up or had mechanical problems or whatever. But now that the number of racers is, is diminishing, uh, we can do more runs now without as much hassle. Uh, you're not going to spend four hours in the sun trying to get one pass. Are you insured, Dave? For what? Life insurance case that falls on you. I think they exclude motorcycle streamliners. As soon as they found out I was going to Bonneville, they canceled me. I see. Well, what we're doing here is we're uh, taking the skin off to prepare the bike to go through tech inspection. They can't inspect it with the skin on. I mean, it looks pretty, but uh, that's not what they're looking for. We're just tidying up some wiring now. Uh, some salt got into some of the electrical components and uh, caused us some grief. We had to jury rig a few things, but uh, we're able to uh, make it work. They're strict, strict, strict on safety here, extremely so. Uh, and they're strict on displacement. If you're 500 cc's and you're entered in the 500 cc class, if you're 501, you're out. One cc more. And they're strict on gasoline. If you use their gasoline, you're running in a gas class, the gasoline standard has been the same forever. No matter what happens with new gases, they keep the same quality of gas so that everybody sets a gas record that's the same as a gas record 10 years ago. Okay? And they seal the tank. And when you come in after you give me your time slip, first thing they siphon some gas out. They do a spectral analysis to make sure it's their gas. What, you again? Yeah, him again. That's what I said. You're having way too much fun. Yeah, again, right. Again. What happened was they changed the rules. We didn't know about it. And the motorcycle end of it, motorcycles only, must back up each license run. Do two passes. We have to do two passes. Eight seven eight zero. Go ahead. I've got my three time slips now, so now I've got three of my licenses lined up. I'm feeling very, very happy. And I'm now headed for 175 to 199 miles per hour, but i got to do it twice. Well, okay, there you are. Congratulations. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Joanne. Originally, we are going to do the 175 to 199 in the Streamliner, but this bike is proving so damn fast that I'm going to uh, go for it because we went 171. So I'm just going to keep it pegged close to the rev limiter and I, I think we can break it. I think we'll break it and get it on it. As Bonneville Speed Week unfolds, the harsh conditions of salt and sun start to take their toll. Despite shorter lineups at the starting lines, equipment malfunctions frustrate many of the racers waiting to make a run. I'd like to see him get off there and get this thing going. Okay, so you guys dead for the moment? For the moment. You want to push it out, work on it, we'll tuck it back in later? Okay. I was all ready. Try to keep myself calm. I was set to go, and now I got to wait again, and it's hot. So uh, I just have to kind of sit here, keep it together. I'll be all right. Got the turning radius of the Queen Mary
standards being challenged at Bonneville Speed Week, the 500cc blown fuel motorcycle record has proven to be one of the oldest and most difficult to beat. Set at 211 miles per hour by a German government-backed racing team back in 1956, it has remained unbroken to this day. Bar Hodgson is now one license away from attempting to smash that record. If you think of it, what you could do is, uh, you know what happened to Rossi, is they found out at 200 miles an hour, the clutch lever was being pressed in by the wind. <laughs> so poke your finger out. We're gonna go flat out in each gear. I'm gonna power shift each gear. And when we get to the second end of the second mile, coming to the second to the third mile, I'm going to be laying down and for the entire mile. And I hope it's a big number. I'd be some kind of wimp if I started thinking about, do I have any limitations here? Because nobody's got any limitations here. You know, if, you, if you're not into what you're here for, you really shouldn't be here. So uh, this is an opportunity for me, it's a chance for me to just steep in this whole atmosphere here, which is a very unusual atmosphere and very hard to describe. It's timeless. Motorcycle 8780. Well, we're not happy. We got uh, 168. But it seems as the day has gone on, things have gotten hotter. We can hear water boiling in the engine. It's so damn hot. The salt's throwing up and it's getting into the grid work on the, the radiator and, and heat's coming up. So I, that's all we're gonna get out of this motor. Back to plan B, B which is the streamliner. Bar has to, to go with the streamliner for tech. And I think that's our best bet right now. It's not gonna go any faster today. So we got a long tow. We got a seven mile tow to get back to the pits. Yep. Back to the ranch. It's a grueling process. It's it's hard on everybody and it's 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 tough. You know, it's it's a test. There's no doubt about it. That's the game. You want to win the big prize, that's the game. I, gotta, I tell you, Bob, I, uh, I've been pretty intense on this thing for a couple of days now, so i got to get my hand back over here. Well, I think this whole thing is a total learning experience. It's a test. It's definitely a huge test of endurance and fortitude and a whole bunch of other good platitudes. But I think we set out to do a certain thing, and we did that with the ProStar bike. We got our first three licenses. You know, that, that's powerful. We could have failed at that point, we haven't. So now it's in and get through our, our final tech, show them we can bail out with safety, and then go for our shakedown run. Oh, this is a little weirder. <laughs> As all our runs had been on the standard superbike uh, for the qualifying for my lower licenses, this was the first time actually in the streamliner. So uh, that was going to make it very interesting. Bob, let's uh, review your uh, fire holes here. Okay. Engine compartment. This is the only one you really use. I got to get in that cockpit. I've got to know exactly what my procedures are, and I've got to do those procedures. And if I do them all right, and we have luck on our side, which is a big part of the experience here, and the machine holds together well, we'll get it. The, the machine can do it. It's it's good for I'll bet 275. We have a chance not to just break this record, but to shatter it. The only thing that'll hold me back is if we do our first run on my B license, because I can't break out 250 on that. Okay, straight down is on. Forward is a starter. Okay, 
So it's off, on, start. Yeah. Swaddle is on your foot. Yep. Okay. Rum, rum. You want to shut it off? Pull it, pull it back. Okay, you just shut the ignition off. Yeah. Okay. It's very tough to get practice time in a streamliner. That's one of the things that makes it very difficult in record setting because where are you going to run it? You can't run it on the street. You could rent an airport, and we tried to do that, but they're very short, so you can't get up to high speeds. That's why Bonneville is where people come to from all over the world because it's 11 miles long and you can run a streamliner. So what we're going to do now is get you in and make sure that all this stuff here, which can't be adjusted on the line, is adjusted. Okay. Although he's now wrenching and driving for a different land speed team, Gary Hensley rode the Aero Streamliner for Bob Williams for three years. He came close to breaking the 500cc record in 2006, but crashed the Streamliner during the attempt. Gary's focus at this year's Speed Week is setting a land speed record in a new four-wheel vehicle of his own. But passing on his knowledge and experience of riding the Streamliner is crucial to Hodgson's success. Barr has very little time to learn as much as he can from the former Streamliner rider. There's a big learning curve. Uh, depends on the conditions of the course and the weather. A motorcycle Streamliner is probably the hardest thing in the world to ride or build and be successful. There's damn few of them that have ever been successful. Lots of them been built, never did a thing. Because this is what they're looking for, right? When you go through tech, he's going to grab your hand and pull it and see if it comes out of the chassis. Because yeah. imagine that there's no skin on this right now, yeah. and you're sliding upside down. You'll have, you won't have enough strength or enough awareness to pull your hands down. You're afraid you're going to crash the whole time. Uh, its bike is moving around all the time. It's got a very low roll center, and you, you're actually looking through a periscope. So what you're really seeing is the world turning around you and you're constantly trying to figure out which way to turn the bars to keep the thing from crashing. So it's a job and it's really, you know, it's very stressful and not a very happy time. How do you feel? I feel good. Good. You know, pre pre pretend for a second you're upside down. Now you gotta get yourself out right now, okay? Come on. Come on out. Show me the operation. It's right here. All you do is that. And how does it work? Just flip it. You You're out. All, all your buckles are loose. Don't touch anything. Don't do anything. Just, Just get out. out Slide your ass down. Pull your chin up. This is much like being an astronaut in that it isn't about getting out and racing. It's about knowing all your procedures and the pre precision involved in it and making all the right steps to make sure that your mission's accomplished. Well, that worked. I think we're ready. Finally. I think I dotted all my I's and crossed all the T's. And we're ready for inspection. This is seventh time the bike has gone through tech inspection. Okay, we ready? Hodgson's journey at Bonneville Speed Week has been anything but a smooth ride. He's still one license away from getting a shot at attempting to break the 500cc blown fuel motorcycle land speed record. And before he can ride in the Aero Racing Streamliner, the motorcycle must first pass this year's technical inspection. The NSU record is the oldest record in Bonneville's book, set in 1956. And if we do set a record, the rider gets into the 200 mile an hour club. What that is, it's not going 200 miles an hour. It's setting a record over 200 miles an hour. You see it? Yeah, it was there all the time. I forgot, I'm sorry. I'm getting old. <laughs> well, we got held up a little bit going through tech. Uh, so we're in the process of doing that now. It just slows the game down again. We're keeping us off the track. No matter how well prepared you are, worked all year on it, you think you got all your ducks in a row, you know, and then uh, something comes along, a little glitch, and we've got military spec connectors. We've got all the best, and still we have problems. 
Um, Tom, what this is, I've got extra hoops for this, all set to bolt in, in case I win a lottery, I can make it longer and put two motors in. <laughs> but I'd have to win, I'd have to win the bloody lottery first. I'll tell you. Get the money for setting the record, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah that's got the bottle cap will get you a ballpoint pen. Yeah. Nothing goes easy. It's always an uphill grind, but it makes victory that much sweeter. This is, uh, you know, funded out of your pocket, out of your, uh, I guess, uh, your RSPs and your kids' inheritance. Uh, <laughs> but it's a love. It's a labor. It's a engineering. It's just, you know, you meet people that you wouldn't meet anywhere else, and the technology you see at Bonneville is just fabulous. All right, so let's just imagine you have an issue with uh, fire or engine failure. Okay. Yeah. Go. Faster last time, Bart was 19. Last time, I'm more worried this time. You can do it faster when it's on fire. <laughs> we passed tech inspection. What we'll do is we'll uh, go back to the pits, fill the tires with nitrogen, top up the gas and the oil and uh, the cooling, the coolant water and so on, and uh, put all the shell back on, pack the chutes, and be ready to run. What I try to do is get the thing warm on the line so it'll idle all by its lonesome. Yeah. So when you start it, With tech inspection idle. complete, former out. Team Arrow rider Gary Put Hensley stops by the pit to help Hodgson with the controls in the streamliner. You know, if, if they have a good week out here, this bike could easily go 275 with no stress or strain whatsoever. Well, my biggest concern was remembering everything I had to do, considering I hadn't done it before and everything was totally foreign. So knowing where all my controls were, keeping that fresh in my mind, what I had to do, um, thinking it through in my head on where I've got to make my shift points, and, and, and all those things that you must do. We were just going over the procedure he needs to follow to get down the track safely the first time. He's got to know when to shift so he doesn't go too fast and make the starter mad at him because he's still speed limited. They don't want him going more than 200 on this pass. So we went over the gearing chart and we set up the lights on the shift mechanism so he can see when to shift and when to not to go too fast. We're geared to go 300. So depending on the conditions, we'll not only take that record at 211, but we expect to go 260, 270 without any problem at all. Now that and a dollar buys you coffee, okay? If conditions aren't right, if it's too windy, if we have a mechanical failure or if something goes wrong, we could very well come back with our hat in our hand again. But our chances this year is as good or better than they've ever been. You know who should be packing this? His bar. Now, I'm not being smart when I drive my race car or who's ever driving my race car. The guy driving the damn car is the guy that packs the chute. Everybody gets anxious and excited. Uh, we've had things where the, where the rider accidentally bumped the chute and the chute come out and the rider can't tell there's no rear view mirrors. Okay, you want to pull that wire through? In terms of thinking about worst case scenarios, you really don't do that outside of knowing that if something goes wrong, okay, I've got to pull my chute, I've got to fire off the fire extinguisher, um, you know, this is how we're going to go down. It's all a matter of thinking it out ahead of time in case there's a bad scenario. I think that the persistence and the stick to it in this is the key to success for anybody in anything. Education doesn't guarantee you anything. You make your own opportunity, but if you attack something, then drag it to the end. You know, don't give up. 
In order to earn his B license, Bar Hodgson now has to ride the streamliner down the timing course within a precise window of speed. No slower than 175 miles per hour and no faster than 199 miles per hour. And he has to do it twice. This will be our first uh, qualifier on our B license. We'll have to back that up in the morning. And then we're good to go over 200. Right now, I got one thing on my mind. It's getting in that cockpit and doing my job. And I've got everything focused on that and tuned in that. I want this record without a doubt. You know, this is the culmination of my motorcycle career. I've ridden motorcycles since I was 15 years old. I've drag raced, I took up road racing at 60, and the opportunity to go out and grasp that record, I can smell it and I want it. There's no doubt about it. Well, waiting in line, there was no fear. I was not afraid of anything. Uh, really, the excitement level was starting to build as we got closer and closer to the line. I guess my concern at this stage is to just keep mentally doing mental checks on what I have to do to know that my job is right down pat. If all this is taking place all day long, I better do my job right, because <laughs> it's only going to be a short run. After a full day of preparation, 70-year-old Bar Hodgson is still raring to go. But at the Bonneville Salt Flats, it takes more than desire to set a land speed record. As every competitor knows, it takes patience, perseverance, and at this late time in the day, it also takes a little bit of luck. Something that hasn't come easy to the Team Arrow Racing crew. Guys, you're not going to make our time frame here. You guys are not going to have time to get this in. Okay? Yep. We'll Thanks see you very guys. much. One way or another, we'll see you guys in the morning. We had waited most of the day in the lineup, and finally we ran out of time in the day. It was getting late in the night, and they cut the, the racing off at 7 o'clock, and that was it. We couldn't go any farther that day. That's it. Yeah. You're the first one cut off? Yeah. Well, that's the agony and the ecstasy, I guess. I mean, that's racing, is how they say it. Next morning, the weather was beautiful. We got to the line uh, for our start position probably around 9 a.m. The starter said, good luck. He says, you've got a seven mile an hour crosswind. And with that, the, the hatch is closed. You're now in total darkness at this time. I took it up to uh, red line in first gear and made my first shift. But I could feel a little bit of wind tugging on my right hand side. As we went to the top of second, made my shift into third. We are now doing about 185 miles an hour. At that point, I started to feel the wind really take over the vehicle on the right-hand side and start to steer me off the course. We have a crash. We have a crash. Right at the three mile. As I got out into the rough stuff, it actually skipped about three times. It sounded like a 45 gallon drum as it, as it hit the salt each time. And it rolled about three times, four times. Everything was really bashing really hard and really fast until we finally came to a stop, fell over to our left, and that's when I hit my seven point harness and bailed out. I consider myself very fortunate that I was able to walk away from such a spectacular crash at 185 miles an hour. My hand had two fractures and two bones in the, in the finger bones and I had battered up knees, but really we came out of it very well. We have a crash, we have a crash, right out to three mile. Would I do it again? Yes, I would do it again. Bonneville's an amazing thing. Um, anybody thinks they can go down there and win a record real easy is, is wrong. Bonneville's a humbling experience. It's a spiritual experience. 
The whole place is spiritual. It is in a very, very different place. If you ask me if I have salt fever or if I got to experience that, I'd have to say yes. Um, it is a strange feeling. As I said, it's very spiritual there. And when I was driving away, leaving it, I felt this tugging at me and tugging at me and tugging at me. And I can see why people go back year after year. It's really a lot of fun.